The next gen update for Fallout 4 brought new quests, new power armor, and most importantly, new weapons. With a quest called Wit Pigs Fly, you'll gain access to one of the most absurd weapons I've ever used in this game. That being the grenade launcher. This thing is crazy overpowered and ammo is easily available, so it felt wrong using the weapon by itself to run through the game. Unless everyone had it. Can you beat Fallout 4 if every gun is a grenade launcher? Now, full disclosure, I made this in Fallout 4 edit and by no means am a master modder, so the companions in this game will have their weapons and not grenade launchers. But besides that, every other gun is one. But before we begin, place your bets now on how long it takes me to die. Winner gets a prize. Let's get into it. Since all my character creator mods are broken and making people takes a whole three minutes, I decided Nate could be the one to endure the great dodgeball tournament of the Commonwealth. So when the vault Tech rep came asking for me to sign a death waiver, I made sure to take as much endurance as possible and a 6 in perception for demolitions expert. Besides that, luck at 3 for bloody mess, intelligence was bumped to a 4 for gun nut, and spoiler warning for the run, gun nut is the most important perk here. Trust me. I went in and pretended to be a normal human who definitely wouldn't always be one shot away from death, and then the end of the world began. But where Bethesda's update broke my mods, it did actually change the main story. Look, Nora and Sean didn't even make it into the vaults! I'm a free man now. Or at least I would be soon enough. Now defrosting, the vault played out much the same. That is until I picked up my first grenade launcher. Alright, thank you. <laughs> All right, so, uh, first shot of the run and we're already dead. First shot of the run and we're already dead. All right, this might be a little bit tougher than I thought. To any of you who had picked the first shot of the run for my demise, you win a gold star. Besides the massive explosion radius, something you might notice right away is that the ADS for the Chinese grenade launcher is fucking abysmal. Thankfully, the damage more than makes up for any amount of bad aim. Out of the vault and preparing for the first major dodgeball match, I grabbed a couple launchers from Sanctuary. But before heading down the road to Concord, I made sure to put on the best skin that the grenade launcher has to offer. It may not be much, but this is Bethesda we're talking about here, so anything is better than nothing. With that sorted, it was time to go free Preston Garvey. There's something special about seeing Preston get lit up with grenades that just puts a smile on my face. But that smile was ripped away when I suddenly lost some limbs. Now, that, yeah, so this is kind of what I expected to be happening. So every single one of those raiders down there are going to have grenade launchers. The only one that has a laser musket is Preston, which means he's severely outgunned. So as long as they don't see us, we should be fine. But if they see us, it's a one-shot. Right, there are still raiders here, who apparently can harness the power of the sun. Taking out the raiders outside with some cheeky tactics, I somehow thought the Museum of Freedom would be less intense. But with tons of camera shaking and catching a grenade at point blank range, I was reminded of just what I had signed up for. So I have to use game... <laughs> I was gonna say I have to use game knowledge to know where these people are, and then shoot myself at point blank range. Oh fuck. <laughs> Oh my... So... Oh no, they can shoot at point-blank range and not hurt themselves? The other thing I'm starting to notice too is like... Sometimes... The shots... Don't... Hit? And I don't know why that is. After taking out the raiders inside, I met up with Preston and the gang and got assigned to head outside to fight even more raiders. And frankly, this just gave me time to test out my third-person aim. Kobe! <laughs> oh, hold on. Kobe! <laughs> Boss, we got somebody up here, and now they're being rained down from above. Like... Holy shit there, bud. There we go. That's a little bit nicer. No! Oh god. <laughs> it's getting rough out here in these streets. No, no, no. Oh god. 
guy, come on! I'm taking myself out. Oh no, not this. Oh, I'd rather take the raiders at this point. Oh god. I was joking! Alright, so that was a bit tougher than I thought. But honestly, considering every shot is basically a one-shot kill, I think it's only fair that everyone follows the rules. Or, at least, sometimes. See, I'd figured I'd get some early game experience by taking out Wolfgang and Simone. Oh god, even these guys have fucking grenade launchers. Well, we can't have that, can we? Except, I guess because I killed them before the quest could actually pop, Trudy just watched as her problems were magically all fixed by some psychopath armed with way too many explosives. Easy Pete would be proud. Oh well, I'll just try out Dan's and his homies. Yeah, I don't know what I was expecting. They didn't actually need me at all. Well, they may not, but Nick certainly does. Have you ever wanted to see what a dodgeball deathmatch in a metro would look like? Well, don't let us know. This is why we have vats. Look, I'm gonna show you why we don't use vats. Ready? This is why we don't use vats. That that is why we do not use vats in this run. <laughs> Ain't no way. <laughs> if you guessed tight hallways and enough areas to get wall banged, you'd win another gold star. But thankfully, I could use the explosive radius to my advantage, at least sometimes. But for the most part, I had the drop on the trigger men before they could even process what was going on. Which made getting to Nick easier than the Raiders of Concord, believe it or not. Haha, uh -huh, my knight in shining armor. Question is, why does he come all this way and risk life and limb? Anyway, you got trouble. <laughs> nice hat. Now, if Nick rescued, we would make a beeline straight to Skinny. Well, not without a few bumps. I wonder if Nick could go out there first, what we, he would do. You think Nick will be okay? I don't think he's okay. Alright, the only thing left is just to talk to Skinny Malone and Darla. Surely they're not mad about their hideout being blown to bits. That thumbnail's fucking gonna be nuts. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting! Like... <laughs> I'm handling this. Alright, so they might be a little mad about it, but not to worry, all their problems would be sorted out soon enough. Alright, well, we're gonna encourage violence again! I just have to shoot faster than you, right? With Nick now saved, we headed back to Diamond City to progress the plot, and now I was following a dog fueled by Cuban imported cigars, who led me throughout the Commonwealth, but whereas a scenic route is usually preferable, we instead walked through pretty much every fight you could possibly get here. Now arriving at Fort Hagen, it was time for another close quarters hellscape, mainly because one of the synths decided to move out from their parents' house and shack up right in the stairway, which was a death sentence for me as the explosive radius was big enough to kill us both. But besides this constant home-warming party, I did finally break three and proceed to evict the rest of the synths from a premises. Arriving at Kellogg, I decided to try my hand at dialogue, attempting to thank him for actually freeing me from my parental confines. I died died in the fucking cutscene? Can I get that from a third person perspective? But it was clear that we wouldn't be able to sort things out. I mean, for fuck's sake, he killed me before I could even get control of my character back. So a fight ensued, and using the Gig and Chad tactic of shooting down a hallway, I was rewarded for my efforts. I got the first legendary of the run. Sure, it's just Kellogg's pistol ripped apart and attached to a grenade launcher with super glue, but it's gonna go in my inventory as a massive success. Look, even Swan likes it. But yeah, he's not the best at exactly following the rules of dodgeball. And seeing how some of the opponents I had played against weren't also following the rules, I think it was time to remove the rules from the equation by bringing down the whole organization from the inside. 
In order to make it to the next dodgeball match, I had to stop off at Good Neighbor and talk to Dr. Amari. But in order to make sure I didn't get my cheeks clapped, I had to scan the room while we Please. chatted. With the area safe, I went into Discount Tranquility Lane to learn about Kellogg's involvement with the dodgeball committee. They had come to confiscate his Shrek R34 collection, but since Kellogg couldn't afford to lose that, he made a deal to go whack Virgil. But since Kellogg didn't make it out of his last match, that meant I could go to Virgil instead and figure out how to bring down the entire organization. The walk out to the Glowing Sea was actually pretty uneventful, but with a little help from some cultists, I made it to the man of the hour. Virgil told me that some of the Institute was hunting him down due to finding a loophole in the dodgeball commission rules. It turns out that if you just kill all the opposing members, you win by default. But with the rules committee out for his head, putting this loophole into practice was actually a bit harder than he thought. Unless I stepped in. One of the high-ranking officials had gone to a practice match with the Gunners at Green Tech Genetics, and if I wanted a chance to make it get inside Dodgeball's HQ, I'd have to make sure that that official took a uh, unexpected fall. Welcome to Green Tech, a place swarming with rubber ball enthusiasts that like to camp hallways. And I'm telling you now, these guys were on a whole nother level. Being able to tag me from any angle, pincer tactics, using some kind of cow excrement enhancing chem to know my exact location at all times, I died here much more than I thought would be necessary. But my skills would be honed here. I would have to adapt or lose, fight fire with fire, shoot first and ask questions never because they weren't alive to ask questions too. But if these guys were giving me this much trouble, how is the official gonna be? And the answer is pretty rough actually. This man took three shots to the face, another to the feet, and I still died. I tried to cripple his arms, dead. Tried just lighting him up, dead. And for some reason I tried the exact same tactic again, only to get the same exact outcome, still dead. Eventually we got him into this standoff where I could just wall bang the courser, and then one final shot finished the fight. So therefore I could now begin my infiltration. With the committee defeated, I needed some help deciphering some tech I had acquired. I don't think I'm gonna see. Whoa! <laughs> Why did they shoot me? I didn't fucking do anything! But another thing that Virgil had said before I left was that everyone would be out to get their hands on this info, so no one could be trusted. Not even the railroad. However, I did get some new drips, so I guess it isn't all that bad. Returning to Virgil, he told me I was heading into the final stages of becoming a dodgeball superstar. First, I would need to join a faction. This would grant me enough sponsorships to afford a teleporter. So since the Minutemen had given me my first taste of the high life, it only made sense to help them out. Preston had me head out to Ten Pines Bluff, where I would then have to prove myself in a quick skirmish against some raiders. But come on, this is Corvega. This is literally the starting settlement mission. Besides some tight hallways, this was always going to be easy. All right, now here's the kicker, right? Can I hit Jared in that building from here? Kobe! Oh! I did- Aw! Oh, okay. That was short-lived. All right, Raider's dead. I got my sponsorship, but sadly, I didn't have enough parts to make the teleporter. Not because I was broke, but just because I didn't think this far in advance. So I went to searching, and honestly, why go searching when you could just follow the traveling Brahmin? Even if it does lead you to a trash can, you'll usually find what you're looking for. With the teleporter built, I made my way into the Institute. Father was doing his regularly scheduled child interrogation, but I was here for bigger fish. If I wanted to bring down the entire organization, I would need to work with Father for a bit before I could just take over as the CEO. And it just so happened the Institute would be throwing a massive tournament between the three major factions. The Brotherhood of Steel, the Railroad for some reason, and the Institute themselves. This is fucking shit everywhere. What the... Oh yes. Oh yes. And after signing away my rights as a human being again, I was allowed to begin the road to the finals. First with taking out a group of raiders at Libertalia. Libertalia seemed like an easy win, but with the surrounding boats hiding a lot of the adversaries and the shots having issues getting through windows, this meant that pushing in would only end in me getting tagged from everywhere. And even trying to swim to the main boat would end in me getting rushed down. I tried to take out the raiders from afar, but the same problems presented themselves. <laughs> oh. Kobe. 
Oh, I gotta reload. Fuck, no. Come on, it'd be cool. Hit him. I mean, that sort of happened, I guess. <laughs> the enemy had me out in the open while they hid in a walled-off ship. And just when I thought I was finally making progress, I was quickly reminded that this was not Concord. When I did make it on board, clearing out the stragglers was straightforward, and seeing how I was struggling outside, the game decided to throw me a bone. <gasps> that changed! We actually- so- so, guns in the world are different, but guns that you buy from vendors aren't. And it's got a drum mag on it? Dude, Ayo! 25% damage and limb damage? Dude, it's coming with me. Ain't no way! Dude! And it looks obnoxious! 16! 16 rounds?! Oh my days, dude, we're cooking! With the power of God and anime on my side, I headed up and told a synth runaway that he was formally banned from any future dodgeball tournaments, to which he hung his head low as we took out his former teammates. Mission accomplished. But whereas Raiders were merely a warm-up match, the following Bunker Hill quest would see the three factions vying for control, with the last place faction kicked from the tournament permanently. Place your bets now. Oh, that's fucked. Oh, it's fucked. <laughs> it's gone. Oh! What a way to start. Fucking beautiful. Let's go. Let's go! Bunker Hill, besides that introduction, however, was actually pretty tame. When I did this same quest with the mini nukes, it was a constant strobing effect. At one point, the screen was white for seven minutes at a time. You just couldn't see what the hell was going on. But here, there was almost no one alive. I'm guessing this is because the enemies can't actually off themselves with their own weapons, which is why so many enemies in Fallout 4 can shoot mini nukes straight at the ground and have no effect on themselves. So when they fired mini nukes, no one took damage as the enemy who fired the shot would be inside the blast radius, causing all the explosions to go off but no damage actually happening. But since the grenade launcher was so much smaller in terms of explosive presence, when an enemy shot at another, it just died. No invulnerability of any kind. And this even actually caused some enemies to just break. So moving inside Bunker Hill, we at least had a little bit more life which was quickly extinguished, leaving just armless synths to wander the area. I went and yelled to more runaways, then told Father I was ready to move into the final match. But before I could do that, I was instructed to instead run some friendly practice matches against the last remaining faction. Heading into Mass Bay was another grenade launcher dance for the ages, shooting into rooms full of Brotherhood members and destroying power armor wearers. It was grand! That is until I got to the elevator. I figured this tiny cage would keep me safe, and uh, let me tell you, that couldn't have been any more further from the truth. I had to die over and over again until I figured out what shift everyone was on, who called in sick, who came in late. I could barely keep track of my day-to-day -day life. Can you imagine keeping track of someone else's company employees? But besides this elevator ride, once I made it down to ground level, the mission proceeded just as any before it. Smash out the opposing forces, steal a battery, and then fight a legendary sentry bot hellbend on mincing my meat only to eventually take it down and get a slap in the face. What did we get? Ah, oh, nothing! We got nothing! What do we want this for? <laughs> But as I went to leave, I was pleasantly surprised to see both the remaining teams keen for a final confrontation. Oh yeah, this is what I wanted. Carnage! This is finally the first true battlefield of this entire run. And it's over. Oh, nope. Everyone just spawned in. Okay, I'm just gonna let those guys- Ah! Jesus Christ. Get them, boys! I have no health. How is that even possible? Before we could get to the main reveal, I had to venture out and recover a committee official. And to be honest, anyone could have done this job as everyone outside was dealt with in two grenades. 
But out of curiosity, I wanted to see exactly how large the explosion radius was. All right, sir. Can you like come out here? Can I just? I, can I kill him if I shoot the door? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I want to try something. Can, is that even possible? The explosion radius of this thing? You can. Potentially, you can kill him through the door. Today I learned. <laughs> Grabbing lunch at a time like this, we're experimenting here. You can't do that. Lawyer found out their sponsor for the raid. Do it, dude. Hire your lawyer to sue them into the ground. Wow, we told him to calm down with the threat of killing him. That's going in the video. <laughs> I need your help, uh, but I have no issue if you'd perish along the way. With that experiment solved, I headed out to Diamond City to announce the final dodgeball match. Now all I had to do was have a meeting and register as the captain of the institute and head to the court. Oh, Kobe! Oh, dude, it fucking crashed into the building and everything. How cool was that? Oh, oh, oh my God, this poor... Ver oh, I did it! Bruh, if that ain't Kobe, I don't know what is. Your boy's a fucking menace. Oh, my God. With that beautiful vertibird opening, the Brotherhood were not happy about having their ship shot out of the sky, and being at a disadvantage to open the assault really didn't help my case, but an accidental generator explosion caused my homies to finally join the fray, turning the tides and allowing us to press forward. But now comes the real bottleneck of the mission, taking the real trophy of the match, Liberty Prime. Dude, that means the guy, the guy doing the whole whatchamacallit's fucking dead. There's no way this is gonna... There's no way this is gonna work. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna pull this off. Oh my gosh! No! <laughs> the explosive deaths are really goofy and funny in this playthrough. It's, it's a little wild. Like, I think most of the time I'm probably the one blowing myself up. But I'm, I'm telling you though, the, uh... <laughs> It, it's the struggle is just trying to figure out where they're coming from like I think once you figure out like where the bad guys are It's not so bad, but friendly fire is a massive thing <laughs> Like that poor guy ain't got no legs that guy's dead everything's bad <laughs> I also think this is the first time in like synth history that we've ever uh, fully Taken the entire thing like no one else is here. Oh there they is Oh, I'm definitely killing my own people. This platform is gonna be such a pain to stay on because we got no the vertebrates. Oh, it's it's oh oh <laughs> oh no! What is it doing? Why did it fly through to blow up? Come on, man. With constant explosions on this very tiny platform, not only was the synth virus dying before it could even do anything, but I would usually follow suit, so relocating to the nearby rooftops was a no-brainer. However, even with a new shooting position, all of my allies were dead. Much like with the mini nuke run, the Brotherhood of Steel don't stop spawning in during this battle, whereas all the synths do have a finite amount. They aren't supposed to, but they do which meant I was left to try and somehow thin out the Brotherhood of Steel while they continually showed up to send me to space. Don't worry, for as many limbs as I lost during this encounter, something magical happened. There is literally... There is literally nobody around. We have killed everybody, virus or otherwise. Everyone is dead. The Brotherhood eventually gave up. For the first time ever during this quest, no one on either side was alive. And so when I walked up to Liberty Prime and had the synth virus spawn in, it just did its thing with no interference at all. At least until a vertebrate spawned in and tried to ruin our fun. But besides that one vertebrate, that was it. Sure, it had been one of the nuttiest beginnings, but this was by far the smoothest completion of this quest ever. And now all that was left was for me to go take my mantle of CEO as father seemed to lose his head in the last few moments before victory. 
As you can see, the grenade launchers added into the game are silly powerful, and with the ability to be boosted by both the Rifleman perk and the Demolitions Expert perk, it's the perfect way to strike fear into every living being and send yourself to the morgue every chance you get. If you have a suggestion for a future video, make sure to drop it in the comments section. And before we go, I want to give a massive shout out to the homies over on Patreon and the channel members. Thank you all for your continued support as it allows me to continue to make these videos for you. And to those of you who joined in on the streams, thank you so much. They're easily one of my favorite parts of my day, and you guys make them amazing. And to you, the viewer, I hope you have a fantastic day because you deserve it. And as always, I've been Chris from Crisis Gaming, and I'll see you on the next one.